Wait, honey. Angelo, don't go yet. Okay, bye, Angelo. Desire, but reverence, awe. Oh, even that we were lucky enough to be born at the same time in human history. Was it luck? Kiss me. I'll always love you. I can't take much more of this. It's my fifth baby shower this month. It must be the season. If I see one more paprika stroller or designer stretchy, I'm having my tubes tied. It's a diaper dog. If you decide to use cloth diapers, which so many people are doing, this attaches the dirty diaper to the toilet seat so you can just flush and clean. It's not the props that get me so much as the attitude. Only eight months ago, Judy was a serious reporter, totally focused on winning a Pulitzer. Yeah, now all those IQ points are focused on wallpaper. Clouds are bunnies. Maybe we're a little touchy on this issue. Me? Oh, well, not in the least. I am not touchy on this subject. I want to have a baby someday. I am touchy about being lectured. That makes me crazy. <gasps> the Martians are coming. The Martians are coming. Judy, you used to write some good stuff. You so pregnant? Oh, go ahead, laugh. You could end up like this. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I'm sort of ambivalent about not being able to see my feet when I'm standing up. I have to go. Oh, thanks for everything. Oh. Bye. Bye. Quack, quack, quack. Listen, I have to go. That was George Liakos. Uh, no, it was a serious work call. I, I told you about it. He hired me this morning to work on the Denny Morrison case. The guy who was up for attempted murder by way of a bomb. Lily, it was in the news. Wait, wait, it's coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. I see a man's car blowing up in Brooklyn, and I also see another man, very attractive for a lawyer. Calling Claire away. Goodbye, Willie. Mm. Have fun. So you knew this guy before the fight? Sure, of course I did. He used to come around the car wash about twice a month. He's always giving my guys a hard time. So a couple times I have to get him off the back, right? I mean, I'm the manager, right? Uh -huh. uh, this guy, this guy is one of those low lowlifes. It's always got to show everybody what a big man he is by dumping on other people. What was the fight about this time? The same thing? What? Yeah. What, guys? What? Uh, so Angela wanted Denny to do some work he for him. He tried to hand me a wad of C notes. He wanted me to make a bomb for him. Well, you, uh, George told me he used to be a SEAL in the Navy. He worked with explosives. Did Angela know that? Come on, how do I know? What am I, a mind reader? Maybe he talks from the contract that he's been some work for. The bottom line is, I told him to get out of my face, and now I'm charged with attempted murder. In other words, you refused his of offer. Of course I refused his offer. So this idiot starts screaming about how I better go to work for him, because he's connected. And I say, connected to what, your mother? But I did not hit this guy. I didn't touch him. I didn't lay a finger on this guy uh -huh. until he threatened my son Davy comes to car wash every day after school and hangs out with me and we go home together because his mother she split for California about a year ago anyway this street slime is screaming at me telling me I gotta do what he says because he knows where I live and he knows where Davy goes to school and boom 
I punch him right in the face. He's squealing on the ground. And his wife gets out of the car. You should have seen her. She's screaming at him and slapping him in the head. And they both get up. They go back in that car. I don't never see these people again. I mean ever. So the next morning, Angelo's car blows up two blocks from his house. He's blown through the roof. And if he hadn't landed on another roof, he'd have been dead. Now he's in St. John's. Yeah, he's a disaster. Look, Claire, this isn't the first time I've worked with you. You know, I don't lie to you. I believe this guy. I didn't do this. Unsavory. Did Angelo threaten Denny or his son? Angelo kept pointing at Davy and screaming, you do what I tell you to do. And then there was much pushing and shoving and shouting. And then Denny, he hit this very creepy fellow, smack dab in the middle of the teeth. Did Denny threaten Angelo at any time? He said, I will kill you, you... And he used the bad name again. Did the wife hear the fight? I think not. She was in the bathroom for a long time. She only saw the very end. You're sure? And I would be happy to testify in the court about all of this. Great. Right. Do you think I can get Marner to explore the possibility that Angelo Morelli was connected and that someone from a rival family tried to blow him up? I don't think Danny Morrison did this. The problem is Tom Marner is an assistant DA that has lost three cases in a row and is looking to get on the scoreboard. A real hero. I know how he thinks. With all the evidence, history of hostility between the two men, public threats on the victim's life, explosives experts, he sees this as a grounder, he wants a conviction fast. Of course. If Denny Morrison were rich and powerful, they wouldn't dare try to steamroll him like this. Uh -huh. You know, if you bring Marner proof that Angelo's linked to organized crime, then he's got to check it out, or he could get caught with his pants down. There's nothing I want to see. Me either. So that's what I have to do? <laughs> no problem. There is a way to make this easy. Our mutual friend, the reporter, the expert on organized crime families in New York. You want me to call Judy. With a little coaxing, you might be able to get all the information you need. Life is too short. To help clear an innocent man. You may have to hang for this. That's raising a seven-year-old boy oh, on his own. Oh, God! Call her. But since the deaths of Dominique Buonarati, did you know that was Michelangelo's last name? Oh. And Lenny the Wolf Rubin, the hierarchy of those families has changed completely. Judy, there is no one who knows more about those people than you do. I desperately need your help. I'd love to help you, and I desperately need your help. Oh, yeah? Harry's in a way in Geneva on what seems to be protracted contract negotiations. And there are some small tasks that I could really use some help on. Yeah. Attila has seriously impeded my physical agility. So is he. It's a little joke name I have for them. He's very rambunctious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so while Harry is away, you want me to do some tasks that he yeah. would normally do, and you will tell me all about the Narbottos and the Biondi? And the Falcones and the Manukians. It'll be a ball. Deal? Deal. The, uh... Oh. <laughs> anyway, if Angelo Norelli lives in that section of Brooklyn, he's probably in the Biondi family. Now, if he hangs out at the Abbey and Way restaurant and plays cars on 13th Avenue, it's a lock. Does he have a job? Yes, his official employer is Atlantic Corporation. They make vending machines. Hmm, so much of this is so territorial, I don't know about Atlantic. But I know Empire Vending Company is owned by Big Tommy Falcone. Even though he's five foot two, they call him Big Tommy because he has enormous feet. When I interviewed him, I couldn't take my eyes off of him. They say the women go wild. No. <laughs> I'm just up the block from Babies on Parade. You know, giant discounts for tiny people. Judy's inside, shopping her heart up. So you getting anything out of her on the mob connections? Yeah, I'm getting some stuff, but you wouldn't believe what I have to wade through to get at it. It's like knee-deep. Judy's always been into detail. 
Yes, detail. It's like being machine gunned to death with gossip about people you don't know and you don't want to get to know. I get lost. I can't follow her. She doesn't finish sentences. Yep, yeah, but you never know what little bit of information is going to lead you to what you need. Right. Like little Frankie Biondi getting caught on top of a water tower in New Jersey in a chiffon gown carrying a rifle. I can really use that, Willie. And there's always the names. The names like Jimmy the Beak and Lenny the Wolf and Frankie the Fox. It's a zoo. I'm going to be Claire the Bat. She is driving me crazy. Yeah, Claire. Remember Denny and his little kid? You need her. Look, I got to get back to work. Yeah. Well, you need to listen to me complain because you're the one that got me into this. I'm going to let that one pass. You're a little upset. I'm not upset. I love comparison shopping for little booties. Pick me up the red ones. Listen, hey, hang in there, pal. Yeah. So if, if the Falcones aren't the rival family, who is? In our bottles. How do you keep this all straight? This is Brooklyn. The diaper dog and the toy soldiers are the Beyondes, south and west. The elephants are the Narbotos, north and east. The Falcones are in Queens. Judy, if all I do is loosely associate Angela with the Beyondes, that won't do it. I have to nail down his rank, we answer to what he really does, and then the prosecutor won't deal. And you'll have to go to the press? Exactly. So what's the fastest way of nailing down Angela's rank? The wife is the key. What sort of jewelry she wears, where she shops, who she hangs out with, what she does with her days. Listen, Claire, there's one important thing to remember. These people do not like to be messed with. That's probably why Angelo Norelli is in the hospital as we speak. Tread lightly. Dr. Gist, to And how are you feeling, Mr. Norelli? Dr. Gist, to radiology. Uh, I don't think he's feeling any better. Well, maybe he will tomorrow. Dr. Stillman, your patient is ready in three hours. Dr. Stillman, your patient is ready. I'm going home now. I'll be back in the morning. Boy, Angelo really is a disaster. Housekeeping to third floor west. Housekeeping. Third floor west. Nurse Duvaret, room 107. Okay, tread lightly, Claire. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. She primps in the window. What a detective. <clears throat> so, what did the doctor say about his being able to walk? With time and a lot of that physical therapy, they think maybe he'll be back on his feet. Oh, my poor Angelo. They're not so sure about what they call his motor functions until they find out if his brain's okay. Hmm, who knows? Maybe he'll be smart. Always looking on the bright side, Brenda. I'll be in a better mood when my Petey gets out of college. Yeah. You're dry, Carmen. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm saying is, 
I had a If my daughter looked like that, I'd kick her out of the house. Hmm. No, you know, kids today, they want to look strange, ugly even. But then it is often a strange and ugly world that we live in. So you can't blame them. Yeah, tell me about it. Her husband's in the hospital. And she's getting her hair done. So maybe she wants to look good for him. She can't pass a shop window without checking herself out. What color is that? On a par red. It's really red. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the same. You know, you look so familiar. Did you ever live on the island? Yeah. What time are you talking about? Baldwin. Nah. Me and Petey lived in Mineola when we were first married. Yeah, but you know, you shouldn't live on the island if you're not married. Well, I'm thinking about getting married. That's wonderful. Miss Costello, I'm sure you're dry now. Yeah, wonderful. When are you thinking of doing it? Oh, you know, we're not going to plan a very big wedding. Now this is going to look great. Well, he is. How long have you been coming here? Four years. I had a feeling that you would like this. It's a statement. Mm -hmm. What's it say? <laughs> <laughs> Knock yourself out, Willie. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you found out about Atlantic Vending. I checked out some of the founding members of that group. One of them, Carla Biondi, died last year. Natural causes? Mm-hmm. In his sleep, in jail. Another's indicted for racketeering, and the third enjoys a happy, full life in an estate on Long Island where the neighborhood is full of unindicted felons. So it's safe to assume that they come under the category of organized crime. Oh, yes. yes. But Gerangelo only delivered machines for them. He doesn't have a record, the guy's clean. On paper, anyway. So how's the Earth Mother? Any more Miracle of Life lectures? Oh, no, we've moved right on to... Don't you want to have a baby someday? Well, do you? Do you? I asked first. It's a mature answer, Willie. Yeah, I do. I'm underwhelmed by your enthusiasm. Look, we have had this conversation before. You are much more concerned about the time clock issue than I am. Admit it, you are. I am more concerned about who the father should be. Call me wild and crazy. <laughs> blonde bombshell. I mean, right out of the 50s movie, if I couldn't approach her, she would have told me to go to hell. What about her jewelry? Nothing special. Small gold earrings, gold chain necklace that spells out Carmen, and a, and a gold bracelet with a red ruby heart hanging from it. Right. And yeah. the ring? How many carats? No diamond ring. Really? Hmm. Nevertheless, considering where he lives and where she hangs out, it's likely that our Angelo is a soldier in the Biondi organization. The mass is rank, a soldier? I think so, but it's sort of tricky. You see, the ruby heart is real. Only oh, there's no diamond, so this guy's no honcho. I can smell it. Just let me get this straight, okay? There's the boss, right. and then the underboss, yeah. and then the consigliere, right. and then the capo regime. There's ten of them. And then there are the soldiers? Buttons. Would you like Same thing. Uh, two teas, please. Right away. And the soldiers get bumped off, don't they? Sometimes. Sometimes it's personal. Sometimes it's a, a, a message. For example, after Sally Pigeonblood, so named because he made this thick ragu sauce and everyone was too afraid of him to tell him, became the boss of the Narbotos. The family against the Beyond. Sally's favorite mechanic. Have hitman. Was called Amadeus Godfrey. So named because he liked to work with piano wire. My God. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, Amadeus Godfrey. Oh, this was Excuse so me. cute. This is my beaver. Oh, oh that's George Liakos. I gotta go. Huh, Claire. Um, I almost forgot to tell you the most important thing. What? The reason that woman, Brenda Big Eyes, nose is so out of joint is because her husband, Petey... He's in college. College means prison. 
so she thinks the family has done her wrong or done him wrong, she's liable to talk. Great! Judy, your help has been invaluable. I really appreciate it. It's our pleasure. His bail's been revoked. What, so that's it? His bail's been revoked? Where they found illegal explosives in his garage. What the hell are they doing searching his garage now? The prosecutor finally had a bright idea, got himself a warrant. Oh, Look, please. Claire, there's nothing we can do. Believe me, I tried. The judge was adamant, so we did a prearranged surrender. What about the new evidence I gave you about the Beyondies, about Angela's Claire, connection? you and I both know in a situation like this, a DA could indict a ham sandwich. Oh, Come on. Okay. Time to go, Denny. Why the hell did you have explosives in your garage? I make a little extra money on the side, clearing land for contractors. It was the one saved some money. A friend of mine just got out of the service. He, he bought himself a piece of land in the Catskills. He, he said, Denny, will you clear this land for me? I said, I said of course I would. You, you went to build a house. This is bad. This is very bad. No, you better. His monarch's got live ammo now. I will not lose my son! Oh, come on. Come on, don't you think if I wanted to blow away this piece of garbage, he, he wouldn't be horizontal at St. John's right now. Let me promise you that. It'd be in the ozone. You know what he said? Look, you want to grab a cup of coffee, talk about this? Sure. Sure. Uh, I'll be right back. Marner, I've got strong new evidence that Angelo Norelli is a soldier in the Beyond the organization and that he was the victim of the hit of a rival family. You gotta check this out. McCarran, I don't have to check out your godfather fantasies. Danny Morrison tried to blow this guy up. Now, I'm not saying that Norelli is a wonderful human being. He did threaten your client's kid, but that only underlines the motive for murder. Morrison should have gone to the police, like most tax-paying citizens. Like I told the judge, he's a dangerous man. Now, if you'll excuse me, please. No. I know what you are. You're careless, and that makes you sloppy, and that's why you lose. And you'll lose this way. Would you get out of my way? No, I will not get out of your way. I will be in your way every step of the process, counselor. Handled that diplomatically, didn't you? It's okay, I like that new woman. Come on, we'll get that coffee. Or would you rather go over to Gus's gym and trade a few punches? I am sorry. Don't worry about it. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Papa, monitor her breathing. Keep the effarage going. Now give me a cleansing breath. Oh. We have to go in on this instantly. He, all he keeps talking about is how he can't be separated from his kid and David's been abandoned by one parent already. 
do the shallow breathing with a fourth exhale. Okay, everybody sit up in a lotus position. Get yourself comfortable. Right? And give me another cleansing breath. Ready? Go. To talk to Brenda. Big eyes. Where do I find her? At Bianni's funeral. <gasps> Didn't you read the paper? Oh, they'll all be there. Yeah, now they say he died of natural causes. Do you think that's true? Uh huh. <gasps> He's been sick for quite some time. About six months ago, yeah. they gave him three months to live. <gasps> Cleansing breath. And relax. Oh, Jeffrey, I really do appreciate you coming with me like this, running the car last minute. How you want? Actually, you owe me thirty-nine ninety-five plus twelve cents a mile. That I can live with. I'm your accountant. This is not so sure. Whose funeral is it anyway? Bruno Biondi's. Not the Bruno Biondi whose enemies end up under exit sixteen of the New Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, the same. Why Jeffrey. did you do this to me? I, you like to rub up against danger. I don't. Calm down, Jeffrey. Calm down. You are not in danger here. I need an escort. They don't let women go to these things alone, okay? So just relax. I'm crashing a mob funeral, and you tell me to relax? You know you look Italian. No, you do. Everybody knows Jews and Italians look alike. Besides, you could always tell them about your Siegel's grandson. Huh? Weeks ago, I played cards with him. He looked terrible, tired, dark circles under his eyes. Uh... Yeah, he looks much better now. We should go pay our respects. I'll leave my office to go look at a dead party. Meet Bruno, the enforcer. Left to right. How dare you show your face here, Putan? I'm sorry, have we met? I'm Bruno's sister. Oh, I'm I'm deeply sorry for your grave loss, ma'am. I Hey, you're not Francine. Um, no. Who are you? I'm Claire Costello. I went to law school with Benny Carroll's nephew, Phil. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a nice boy, Phil. Yes, he is a nice boy. Everybody. It's very nice chatting with you, ma'am. <laughs> Who is Phil? And we're gonna die. Come on, Jeffrey, chill out. There's a lot of money represented here. You could do some business. Well, aren't we popular? Mm -hmm. How much longer are we staying? You changed your hair? Well, I'm experimenting, you know. Is this your fiancé? Jeffrey Katz, Brenda Vitale. Oh, Katz, and I thought you were knobbly done like me. <laughs> well, they say Jewish boys make good husbands. It's all true. Jeffrey, would you be a doll and get me a glass of water? Would you like something, Brenda? Yeah, I'll have the same thing. 
So, Brenda, how is he doing? Oh, they're not doing right by him, Bob. Like you're supposed to get him into one of those nice prisons, you know, like the politicians go to in Connecticut. Now they say that there's some hitch in the transfer. I say they're not paying enough attention, if you know what I mean. But they're picking up Angelo's hospital bills, oh, right? Gosh. After Narbada's probably put him in there. Oh, no, you're kidding. That wasn't a hit. Now, who would waste their time whacking on Angelo? Well, he's a cover home. A small-time wise guy. Oh. Angelo delivers the uh, equipment. Nothing else. Hmm. Are you sure it wasn't hit? Yeah. So who would bother? Tell you who should have. Man. That stiff you just paid your respects to? Yeah. Bruno might have been Bruno the Enforcer in the big bad world, but at home? El Limpo, if you know what wow. I mean. Yeah, that's what made him so nasty. Angelo was keeping his wife Teresa happy on the side. Did Bruno know? Yes. Did Carmen know? Oh, thank you, Jeffrey. You are a friend. No, actually, I'm an accountant. <coughs> okay, well, maybe you could help me with something. Oh, I'm sure he could. Excuse me. Oh, you know what? I have to go to the ladies' room. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Hey, Jeffrey. Luca DiCenzo staring at your lady. Of all the guys in this room, he's the last one I'd want to mess around with. You know, you look just like my wife's youngest sister. Spooky. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's weird when that happens. I just have one of those kinds of faces. People think they know me. Fred, how did you get these photos? I'm sitting there at the Joint Federal and City Strike Force, and someone says to me, Hey, McCarran, isn't that your sister? It was terrific, really. I want to thank you for giving my career a real boost. That's Luca the Brute DiCenzo. You're chatting with Al Capone here. Are you out of your mind? He was very sweet. He thought I looked like his wife's sister. Sweet. Claire, what has happened to your brain? These people are dangerous. You just don't stroll in and out of their lives. I wasn't thrill-seeking. I'm a professional working on a case. Hanging out with people who deal in extortion, drugs, murder. Oh! Boy. What? Oh, don't tell me you know Louis Manukian. He's the guy we've been following on interstate counterfeiting. Angelo wasn't blown up because of business or money or drugs or any of that stuff. He was blown up because of... Sex, of uh, passion, of Mookie. Louis isn't into counterfeiting. He's into transportation. He moves things from one place to another. You see, he isn't very bright, so he can barely sign his name, let alone make plates. But he is very good looking. I have to go. Clear. I'm not playing the big brother here. This is one going up to another. Now, Judy, your friend, the reporter, was protected by a profession. You're not. And you're the only sister that I got. I will be very careful. Okay.
Norman, let's see what secrets you're getting rid of. Trash. Uh-oh. Here we go. Mercenaries. Weapons and bombs. Carmen, baby, these are heavy-duty bedtime stories. You sure did your homework. Oh? Yeah. That's where I found out how to do it. How to blow up the cheating Gavon. It's easy. Carmen, you got a carry permit for that. It's a felony, man. It's Don't right. let the size of the piece fool you, lady. You put jacket at hollow points in this baby, and it will stop a Ford. After I blow you away, no New York jury's gonna do anything but slap my hand. This is Bernie Getzler, and I'm totally within my rights protecting my home and my life against an intruder in the dark. Now just listen to me, Carmen. I am no kind of threat to you. I don't care that you tried to blow up your husband. That is within your marital rights, as far as I'm concerned. All I want to do is clear an innocent guy with a seven-year-old kid, and, and I don't even have to point the finger. From what I've been hearing, you know, woman to woman, Angela deserved a beating for what he was doing to you. Well, you have been digging up dirt on me. I have been digging some up on you. Your name ain't Costello, and you are a private investigator. You people have accidents all the time in your line of work. Let's get serious here, Carmen. You blow me away. The cops are going to think twice about what happened to Angelo. And I am not just any intruder in the dark. I am a private investigator working for the defense attorney. Now, that's not going to look so good. Come on, Carmen. All you have to do is change your testimony about what happened at the car wash, huh? You curse Sally Pigeon Blood and all the Narbotos. Besides, you shoot me at this distance, powder burns all over the place. My hair's ruined. <laughs> You're a cool number, aren't you? I can help you. Oh, you bet your butt you can. Because you'll get it shot off if you don't. Well. That sounds fair to me. Okay. So, it's one for yes, two for no, three for maybe. Angelo, I think you would agree with me if I were to say to you that these kind of things should be kept in the family. Now, you know what really happened, huh? Carmen put a bomb in your car because you were messing around with Bruno's wife, Teresa. And you didn't want to tell anybody because you didn't want to get embarrassed in the family and you couldn't do anything about it until you got better. Angelo, we can't let Denny hang to this because that would be unfair. Do you know why? Carmen blew up your car because of the way that she feels about you. Otherwise, why go to such extremes? Look, look at the person that we're dealing with here. This particular woman. How does this particular woman express herself? Does she throw your clothes out the window? Does she throw you out of bed or steal your money or call a lawyer even? No, 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 no. She puts a bomb in your car. Mm. Angelo, she did that out of passion. Yeah, I did. You fell in love with Carmen and you married her because of that passion and that fire. Mm. Louis, I only did that to get even. I never even liked the guy. I told him to get lost. <laughs> yeah, I did. So you can see how by your behavior you set the wheels in motion which eventually ran you over. Angelo, think about it. I think it's nobody else's business. It's just between the two of you. So what you both have to do is make a decision. Either you patch it up or you split. But either way, nobody else gets hurt, including me.
because there is that sealed envelope which will only be open in case one of us untimely departs. Capiche? Yeah. Yeah. There is one other piece. Hmm. We dropped the charges against Denny. Right. Well, it's been something, you two. For me, I like happy endings. So you two seem to care about each other in your own special way. Why don't you give it a shot? Or not? I'll leave you alone now. Ciao, baby. You got major chutzpah. Anything I can do to make you feel better, handsome? What are you and your dad gonna do to celebrate, huh? Huh? We're going surfing. We're just coming to right. you? We'd like you to. We're taking stripers on outgoing water at Gin Beach and Montauk Saturday morning early. I'd love to. <laughs> love to. Look at that. I wanted to get you a present. He picked it out himself. And I wrapped it too. No. Thank you. <laughs> How did you know I was a Mets fan, huh? I love it. Driving to trash for you? No, this is fine. I'm fine. I'm really sorry to have you do this. I thought Harry would be home by now. Hey, I'm the coach, right? Right. right. How much time between the tracks? Oh, five minutes. Oh, wow. Oh. Are you the wife? I'm fine. It's supposed to happen like this. Is it in a little early? No. <laughs> what happens if the coach panics during childbirth? Every coach asks himself or herself, what if I cannot carry through with this overwhelming responsibility? Do not worry. Many are overwhelmed at the impact of the transitional stage. Remind yourself that you can help her relax, relax and remain in control. Okay. The shorter the labor will be for both of you. Oh, boy. Or girl. Oh, God. <laughs> Fully dilated. Where's the husband? In Switzerland. I'm the coach. Uh, uh, push, push. <clears throat> I can't. My focus point isn't working and I can't do anything. Well, well forget about it. Think about the baby. Uh, yeah, come on, it'll be uh, fine. Uh, if you're really my friend, you'll get me some drugs. It's too late for that. Push! I can't! Oh, God, this hurts! Take a deep breath. Now, you listen to me. Did you ever miss a deadline in your life? Who scooped the whole town on the gangland wars, huh? I did. You got the guys to talk and the cops went crazy. What about the time you got the barrel present to talk, huh? In an interview, he admitted he'd really rather be a woman. How'd you get those? You fought for them. You fight for this one. Come on, push! Fight! Fight! Fight it out! Come on, push! Oh, God, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, baby, it's crowning. He sank Rome, raped and pillaged, tore down the Colosseum, put half the civilized world into slavery. <laughs> yes, there was that. <gasps> but nobody ever forgot him. <laughs> Next, on my book. I've got a surveillance job for you. 
Hello, this is Roger Dolan's secretary. This has got to be the one everyone's been calling us about. Your phone's tapped. What? Roger said you were jealous of me. This is too weird, even for me. I will not be the one to tell one of my closest friends news that will destroy her life. Roger Dolan is off bounds to you, starting now. Next on West 57th, U2, the rock supergroup that's using their music for peace in the 80s. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, the action starts at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL Today, followed by an NFL doubleheader.